Let's actually talk about Blue Gun Lancer in detail because before on my older Gun Lancer videos, it was very basic. This one would be talking about the theory crafting and just a little more and your thought process of actually building your character, right? Gun Lancer Blue is called Blue and Gun Lancer Red is called Red. It's because Blue is called a normal skill, right? It's called a normal skill. It says it in the bracket as well. And red skill is called a land skill. That's why I said this is a, these are red and these are blue. So you got you guys kind of call it blue and uh, red gun lancer. So the reason why it's a blue gun lancer is because they take only the blue skills. There's an exception where some people like burst cannons, surge cannons. So they take surge cannon or sometimes they take fire bullet for additional destruction or something like uh, invalton or dash upper fire as well. Dash upper fire is is one of the uh, best counter attack skill because it attacks twice it dashes a little bit forward and you tend to be you know since you're in super armor the whole time uh, this happens to be the best one because your other counter which is bash the range kind of sucks so let's go over the blue for now and then let's go over some red um, the red afterwards so you have shield bash and leap attack and guardians thunderbolt and shield charge as your main DPS skill. You have four of them. You have four of these main DPS skills. But before any before anything else, go over both red and blue gun lancer uses a skill uh, very importantly. So you have bash, and then you have shout of hatred, and then you have Nalashio's energy. Technically, some guys if you do a solo play, uh, they don't take Nalashio's energy. They take another DPS skill. But Nelashia's energy is just so good to appoint to your teammates that um, I don't think it's a good idea to not take Nelashia's energy. So to going forward, let's talk about Bash first, right? Bash, you always have to max it. Well, you don't really need to. If you uh, run out of uh, skill points, you can actually level it up to 7. Because what's important here is you have your synergy skill, which is minus 12% on armor. And then you have... The tripod that increases your damage by 33.5% if you max it out. So when you're working on your tripod, let's I'm gonna talk about a little more detail on it later. But this tripod is number one. If you don't have this, you lose most of your DPS. This is the leveling this tripod uh, is your number one priority. Uh, there's no exceptions. Uh, so let's see the difference between this 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 regular bash. That's the range. That's the range, right? That's how far it goes. It's still cl <laughs> it's still pretty short, right? So we have, you know, you have the bleed here to give him the bleed debuff. Or you can add something like an overwhelm. Because overwhelm is actually pretty good because this thing is uh stagger is high. And if you add overwhelm on top of it, it just it just goes out super high too. So that's actually really good. So in this case, you would add something. Rage works well because rage increases your attack speed and movement speed for six seconds. And usually these kind of skills are used very uh, on a skill that's very often. Like you can spam. You're, you have to spam it, right? So you're, you're spamming this skill most of the time. You always have to start with a bash. So something like a rage rune is also a very good choice. Now let's go over to Shadow Hatred. This is also your go-to skill. Usually it puts on the cooldown. And then you have the shield amount. And then you also have this level 10 synergy skill where your head attack, back attack skills damage increases by uh, up to 12%. This particular synergy is the reason why back attack, head attack classes wants to take you. So if you have blade and gun lancer in the same team, that's 24% damage increase. That's like two, that's like two engravings almost. Well, one and a half, but that's it is considered why it's the most uh, synergy heavy class, right? That's why you never take it off. So, as for runes, right? Let's talk about runes real quick. Uh, you usually add something like, you know, focus because it lack because it decreases your mana usage because this one costs five hundred ninety two mana, right? And then you also use something like rage too. Rage work also works as well because you use this very often. So let's save it here. We use it. You know, you get to taunt them. But sometimes, even if you don't taunt them, the synergy is still there. Okay? Now, 
With that being said, the next one, the Nelasha's Energy, right? Nelasha's Energy is very simple. It gives you, you do the cooldown, and then you also have more shield or cleanse. But usually you take cleanse, and then you add in additional uh, uh, shield on top of whatever that you give. And this one, it just increases attack speed, but no one really uses this. This is what you do. So you just use your shield, and then it gives a shield, and then it cleanses as well. So the reason why I went over these three skills is because this is the the go-to skill that you are supposed to use. So obviously, since the cooldown is very crucial for this particular skills, you add in cooldown gems on top of it. So going over that, now let's all go over the other skills. We have the shield charge, and then you have the leap attack, and then you have the guardian thunderbolt, and then you have the shield charge. Four, and then you have one left. What do you usually put in? You can put a counter. You can put additional destruction. Or you can also put uh, a search cannon. It works so. But usually when I play blue, this is exactly how it took it. Because I like taking counters. You don't usually take the synergy here because your bass synergy is enough. right? You usually take the speed. Right? And then you also take the damage related tripod. And then you also take a damage related tripod, which it increases your thing by uh, times two. And this thing, you usually put either uh, same case. Um, this particular skill is fast as well in cooldown. It's only nine seconds, right? So you can also put something like rage, right? Or you can also put this is a newer rune that came out and then legendary. Uh, which is a quick recharge. There's also quick recharge as well. And then there's also bleed. And also you can put something like a cleanse rune too. But since you already have cleanse, it doesn't uh, really matter which one you put. You can also put gale rune if you want to, right? And then you have the leap attack, where leap attack is either one or two, right? Because it decreases your cooldown, but you can also just increase the damage straight up. The reason why some people go level two for uh for this uh, cooldown is to match the cooldown with bash so if you don't have a high level cooldown gem for leap attack it does not match with the bash so usually most people put it on damage and actually uh, cover that up with the higher level cooldown gem and then you have the two which is damage related and then you have the level one to jump it twice to do enough damage and then this one you always put the highest level of gale wind because what you do is you just jump twice like that right this is your damaging plus also maneuvering skill and you'll be using this very often that's also why i have this skin because it's a dino skin it because like all it does is like just jump around all the time so it was pretty fun to do and now guardian thunderbolt right guardian thunderbolt same thing so it's two or three so uh this particular skill some people do go for this because it decreases the cooldown as well. So you can either use your tripod to lower your cooldowns of the skill or just increase the damage. But usually people do it for the maximum damage instead of the cooldown. So you put in the third tripod and then you put a, a damage related and then you put damage related adding in the next level of gale wins too. But you can also put overwhelm if you're lacking stagger. But when you're playing with a gun lesser, usually you don't lack stagger. Uh, in the game unless someone's doing something terribly wrong now you have the shield charge shield charge is one two and three or three just damage right so you have the defense or damage or cooldown but usually you just put the maximum damage and then you have the shield right and then you have the level three for uh level two for the um more hits now the number two tripod is a preference right so if you think the range kind of sucks, some people will go here. <clears throat> and if you want more shields while uh, charging because you get hit all the time, you go, you go for the shield. But for me, what I did was I wanted to move faster. So I actually maxed out this uh, level of uh, the swift movement. It's actually It actually moves really fast. But since it's, I switched to red, my tripods are different. Uh, I can't switch it. I have it here uh, for the gun lancer, but I can't switch it back. But if you level this up to the maximum, you move so much faster. So if you want the gun lesser to move like a lot faster, right? You can uh, you can level that tripod up. 
Okay. So there's that, and that's about it. And then you also have another skill, uh, which is this particular skill. It's called, uh, what is this called in, yeah, Shield Shock. So Shield Shock, people have been asking me about, oh, how come you don't use Shield Shock, etc. right? Uh, some people do. So you have all the damage skill here. Uh, no, this is the uh, attack speed here. And you have the uh, uh, increased defense here, or you can just increase the range, etc. But most people do uh, taking less damage while doing it. And then you also have something, you hit it twice. So this particular skill, if you just look at it, you know, it just smashes it twice. This is just an additional damaging skill. So when do you actually use this? You use this if the raid doesn't require any counter for that additional damage. But the reason why I don't have it is because uh, you can only have a limited amount of tripods equipped, right? So when tripods change and then you actually can level it as like a library, Maybe you can switch uh, skills very, very freely and have better, uh, better arsenal, if you know what I mean. If you are limited in having 18 uh, tripods, the problem was, I, oh, you know, I kind of want to shield shock, but I can't level up my tripods. So I have to level up again. But if I want to level it up again, I have to do it again by equipping it by like, you know, my gloves or pants or something like that, right? So there was not much freedom. So maybe in the future, if tripods tend to be more, if tripods have more freedom, we can actually level this tripod, right, earlier and just switch skills accordingly. Uh, that being said, that covers everything for Gun Lancer, right? So this will be the thing. And then you have the, you have this at 7 most of the time for quick, the quick cooldown, the quick prep. And then you can just level up whichever you want, which is usually the AoE damage uh, when you are focus focusing this on counter, right? So now you have all this stuff. Obviously, you will have some skill points left uh, when you do that, 64. So usually when you level everything else up, you put it on the main DPS skills like that, all 12. And uh, for me, I think you just put whichever you want. Actually, it doesn't matter. So I think I've seen people put it on bash. I've seen people put it on like Shadow Hatred, whatever. But as long as your main four skills is leveled up properly, it's better. So we talked about skills. Let's talk about gems real quick. So as gems, uh, it's actually really simple. All gem cooldown is exactly the same. But every single cooldown gem has to link with Bash. For example, if you need every single skill to be uh, linking properly, linking properly, you need the Bash gem to be at the highest as it can. Uh, so for example, let's say your bash gem is at seven, right? If, it, if your bash gem is at seven, you need the leap attack. Oh, I, can, I actually said this backwards. You need the leap attack gem to be at least nine. Uh, and the reason why that is because in one bash, technically, if the skill is, hold up, let me switch up my, so if I have in one bash within the six seconds, Uh, hold up. Did I level it up properly? You should be able to add three skills in. You saw that? And then when you do your next bash, you would do your other skill and then your other skill. Obviously, mine is not ready, right? I don't have any of the tripods, but at 500 swiftness, your cooldown should be linked towards bash into three skills and then bash into three skills and bash into three skills in order for that thing to happen properly you need the cooldown gems to link it properly so that's why uh some of the examples that i've seen on the examples of the korean guys they have a higher level cooldown gem on the main dps skills than bash because bash is already a short cooldown it's only eight seconds with the level seven gem right and since it's level 7 gem, you need a level 9 gem for leap attack to be even quicker than this. So that you can actually use leap attack as soon as you can uh, use the next bash. Because the bash is cool. Bash lasts about how many seconds? Bash lasts about 5 seconds, right? You have about 5 seconds and then you have an empty time frame for 3. And then when you use your bash again, you want that leap attack to come back. Because that's your main DPS skill, right? This is also including the Guardian Thunderbolt as well. 
right? And then you're just doing all your skills within that six, uh, five second, six second time frame. And you bash again, and then you have to use your different skills. And then your two skills need to get ready. That's why this class is very simple, uh, because all you need to do is just turn on your turn on your um, battle stance, and then just spam skills. You know, you bash, and then you use your skills. And then when your bash comes back, you know, you bash again, right? And then you do your skills. That's it. That's all you need to do. The reason why the cooldown is janky is because I don't have the gems for it, right? But when you guys have the gems for it, work on your gems. And if you wanted to calculate based off of your build, for example, hey, I only I don't have 500 swiftness. I actually don't have swiftness. I go swift, uh, I go spec crit, right? Uh, if the cooldown doesn't work, you have to match it with your cooldown gems and test it on the trickshin yourself because everyone's different. So if I do the gem uh, counting, it'll be cooldown gem on bash, cooldown and attack gem on four of these skills. That's nine, right? And then you have the cooldown on Elasha, and then you have the cooldown on your counter skill. That's exact 11. So that's how you do it. Uh, it's bread and butter. Uh, Gunlancer is one of the easiest class because it's the easiest to build. Hence, uh, let's go over the combat stats too. So for combat stats, right? It's very simple. As you guys may know, you guys have been building classes, right? You guys will notice that combat stats, you can select two combat stats for the necklace, and the rest is one. So sometimes you go one-to-one -one ratio, you have like a, a max ratio, etc. Usually when you say spec crit, you go everything on spec and then crit on sub, on necklace. That's how it usually works. Gunlesser blue, you only need spec. You have the highest spec possible, the better. The reason why is because if you look into it, spec gives you shield regen, spec gives you normal attack skill increase, Spec also gives you awakening damage, which is not super important. And the maximum shield amount when you're using the X skill. Well, usually you don't use the X skill uh, most of the time. But the problem is, if you have about 10 spec, you get about 1.57% damage increase. If you're having a shit combat stat, increasing like a level 1 of the engraving, if you lose 100 spec from your uh, specific build, you're technically losing... 11.57% damage. So that's why sometimes on a high spec class, getting a higher quality accessory is actually better than trying to go for five threes. This has been always calculated most of the time because specs impact too much. Crit doesn't impact as much because crit is just a crit rate. But spec increases your damage, increases your shield gain, all this stuff together to a point that if you are using a very bad quality accessory, to go for a 5-3, you actually do a side grade or you actually do a downgrade than an upgrade. And this is the same case for every single spec class, right? Now, you have a choice. So I went full spec, right? Everything is spec. And now your necklace have a choice of between a crit or swift. So what do you do? If you go swift, what happens? You're missing crit. So where are you going to get the crit from? You get it from the engravings. So let's talk about... Uh, since we we're talking about this, with the combat stat, this kind of links towards to it. The main engravings that they usually use is Grudge and Curse Doll is uh, guaranteed in there. The reason why is because he is so tanky to a point that Grudge and Curse Doll is not a penalty for him. If you just have the shield on the whole time, you don't even need to heal. He just has the shield on the whole time. Grudge and Curse Doll is literally like no penalty for this guy. That's why you always go Grudge and a curse stall as your main and at the same time there's another damage engraving which is stabilized state stabilized state is actually pretty cheap what stabilized state does is if your hp is over 80 percent you get additional 60 percent damage if you are going under 80 percent hp very very often as a blue gun lancer you are doing something wrong he never loses hp because what happens is if i give you an example I have 1800 spec, right? So let's say you're just fighting like that, right? You have Nelashia for the shield, shield. If you use your taunt, this is how much it feels. This is how much it fills up. And then you have the shield on the whole time doing damage, doing damage, and doing damage. Let's say your shield falls down. You, your, your, your shadow hatred comes back up. And then you fill it up again. He never loses HP. So if you lose HP, you're doing something wrong with the blue gun lancer. And I'm pretty sure most people who are playing Blue Gun Lancer have already recognized that. Uh, that's why in terms of 
the engraving choices you most people take stabilized state for that flat 16% damage increase. Let's talk about the class engraving for a second. The level one class, the reason why they everyone has level one combat stance is because if you read the engraving, it says it increases the damage of normal skills by 20% and increases the shield gain by 30%. And every time you get hit, you get a buff where every stack you get 4% damage increase. That stacks up to three times, which is 12%. So if you get hit during your combat stance up to three times, you get 12% buff. However, look at level two. What does level two do? Le what does level two do? It actually doesn't increase any damage on normal attacks, uh, normal skills. It's all 20% flat. At the same time, shield gain goes to 40% and then 50%. And the buff for the 4% increases to 5 and 6. This is a waste of diamond nodes. That's why most people have combat stance level 1 is because it's a level 1 engraving that gives you 20% damage increase, gives you shield gain. Also, it gives you a conditional damage buff that's up to 12%. That's why everyone has it as level one. Like it's good, it's OP. Uh, now let's go over some of the other examples. Now from this point on, you've been thinking, what else can I bring? So you have one, two, three, you have four. So these are the engravings that I just shared about. Even this is, this, this seems super solid, right? This seems super solid. Now what other engravings do you think you can do? There is one more that is really OP for this guy. It is called Barricade. Why do you think Barricade's OP? Barricade's OP because as long as you have a shield on, you do 16% damage. That means I have a shield on the whole time. I just have 16% damage increase every time. So when you just fight, you have 16, 20, 16, 16, and then up to 12. And 20% damage increase in all skills. By having this 3, 3, 3, 3, 1, your damage is stacked up. That's how the thought process of a Gun Lancer, Blue Gun Lancer works. Now, let's get to the fun part where what does the fifth engraving is going to be? Because you have level one, you can actually have a level two of something. You have a choice between Spirit of Sortion or Adrenaline. Now, let's look at Spirit of Sortion real quickly. If you get Spirit of Sortion to level two, what happens is increase of movement speed and attack speed by 8%. This is actually really important because the 8% attack speed and the movement speed actually impacts your bash and the animation that is required to do this particular skill. So I do bash. And then I use my other skills. So I landed my skills in six seconds, right? Now, if I actually remove the spare absorption. Okay. Look at that. So it's so slow. You barely land the full damage within that time. So that 8% increase in movement speed is actually pretty crucial. Now, and then when you uh, actually get to get to Ancients, you can have a level 3 Spirit Absorption too. They do that sometimes. But now, here's another problem. Your crit rate is 22%. Uh, and the reason why it's 22% is because I have a different Relic set. You usually go... I'll talk about Relic set after this, okay? So when you have a Nightmare, you have, your crit rate is 0. It's actually pretty bad. Therefore, what you usually do is you put crit on it to 500. Because that's what necklaces do, right? That's what necklaces do. So I have 17.89% crit. It's actually pretty low, but this is this is what it is. So if you happen to bring a spare absorption, you take substat on crit. Now, there's another option where you can actually take 500 to crit on swiftness to 500. And you take adrenaline instead. Now you question yourself, it's like, which one's better? And every time when you guys answer me, ask me this question on my stream, I always say it depends. It's because this is exactly the same. Not exactly the same by number wise, but if you have 500 swiftness, your attack speed and movement speed is 8.58%. And your skill cooldown is also decreased by 10.57. This skill decrease in cooldown is actually pretty good. The reason why is because remember about the gems, right? You're... Your gems, your bash, it can be faster. If you do it this way, you're swift, you're a little faster. You can land all everything in, and then your cooldown's much faster too. So there's a benefit in that. There's a benefit in that, and also you move about the same speed as you have level two spare distortion. So it's exactly the same thing. It's almost exactly the same thing because if you have 500 swiftness, you have 8.58, and spare distortion level two gives you eight. 
But Adrenaline level 2, what does it do? It gives you the attack damage, but it gives you at the full stack, you can get 10% crit rate. So your crit rate is flat 10%. So you have less crit rate. So let's say later on when we have five threes though, you put Adrenaline to level 3. And what happens if you put it to level 3? You get more damage and you get additional crit, 15%. That's why there's a bit, there's a different builds. There's that other one and then the other one. And sometimes you can get the 10% attack speed and movement speed from somewhere else. Where do you think it is? If you have a static with a support, you can actually convert this into crit. So if that, uh, after having crit and spec, you will have 17.89 plus 15, which is the max one. So if I turn on my adrenaline full stack like that, it's going to be 27.89. That's how as that's how as high as it goes for uh, crit and spec. And then you have the nightmare. So with that being said, that's why uh, these builds are particularly exist. And then I show you why it exists. There's also another version of this build where what I used to do is I sacrificed my 16% damage and I got both like this. Because this is a legitimate build as well. It's just that you lose 16% damage, but you get to crit more and you get to get your speed a little more. And I can put I can put the crit stats on the combat stats to make it faster. Or I can actually put it on swiftness too. If I put it on swiftness, what happens? I'll be even more faster. So uh, the thing I'm trying to get the point across is based on your needs, based on your play style, I gave you, I gave you enough options for you to choose. Obviously, what do you what do you guys think the highest DPS ceiling is? If I tell you what the highest DPS ceiling is, it is obviously the one with adrenaline with spec crit. This is the highest ceiling in DPS. For example, if I go spec crit, this is the highest ceiling on DPS. Spec crit and then adrenaline level 3. Why do you think that's the case? Is because you're sacrificing all your da all your speed, all your movement speed, and all your cooldown, and you're still like fighting accordingly with it. Uh, but if you have supports, just add top. But if you have support, just add top. Add ten percent here, and also add ten percent here. Oh, it's going to be eight percent by the way, because it's the uh, level one set bonus. Level one set bonus is eight percent. Level two is ten, and level three is twelve. It's which is huge. So the question is, can I play a slow character or not? Here's the answer for it. This is the highest ceiling. So if you have a static where you have a bard, or you even have a war dancer that can give you additional movement speed, you push, you push that damage a little more. But your solo play is going to be a little bit clunky. That's why I gave you another option of you can actually convert this into Spirit of the Ocean level 2 if you want, and put it on crit, or you can also go Adrenaline level 2 and go Swiftness. They're all fine. It's just that uh, Gun Lancer is not supposed to crit as much. Okay? So I think this covered like almost every single Theorycraft part of it for Blue. Because Blue is just so simple. It's just one or the other. And one has advantage and disadvantages. And uh, if you just say, I just want biggest damage. Then you just use the top damage. But you're going to be so slow. Right? But you go, I want to be faster. Then you obviously would want to go for uh, the the, uh, the swiftness as well, right? And for relics, relics is nightmare. Uh, you can actually go uh, hallucination and salvation as well. There's a there's an option for that. But if you read hallucination and salvation, it's it's very simple. Hallucination gives you what? It gives you crit rate, and salvation gives you what? Additional attack speed, right? If it gives you a additional attack speed, that's faster animation. Therefore, you can uh, rotate more skills. However, the reason why you go Nightmare is because Gun Lancer runs out of mana very quickly. And if you run all out of mana, uh, and it goes to the mana recovery mode, your cooldown drops really fast too. Why not use the Shadow Hatred much more faster, right? That's why most people go Nightmare. Because Nightmare is one of the best... Uh, relic set for mana users. So that being said, I think that I think this covered everything uh, for Blue Gunnesser.
You don't sustain mana. A good question. So you don't sustain mana region phase, but when you're in the mana region phase, you can just spam a little bit more fast. You can spam a little bit faster, and uh, that's a good question too. So when you guys are thinking about splitting relic sets, I don't recommend splitting relic sets because it's because you guys never experienced the, the full six relic sets. Uh, the only reason why you split relic sets for Dominion and uh, Nightmare for something like a War Dancer is because if you have two Nightmare, you can have something like a, a flat because the level because the two sets of Nightmare it literally in decreases your mana spend by fifty percent and increases your skill damage by seventeen. That's an engraving, right? That's an engraving amount of damage. The four set uh, that they can also have is something like. Hallucination four set or Dominion four set, etc. That's how it works. That's why you split a little bit. If you if you run out of mana, for example, let's say you play, we're gonna talk about red in a little bit. If you keep running out of mana, going two sets of nightmare is also another choice because it just decreases your mana usage. You'll be able to spend more skills, and that's that's exactly why instead of going six Dominion, that increases damage even further. You kind of get that balance of using less mana. But when you go like when you guys are th talking about two 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 like all this stuff, it is not it's nothing special. Cause like if you read the six sec bonus, uh, it's usually better than most uh, four two sets. All right, so that covers the blue gun lancer. It's, it's super simple, right, guys? Like blue gun lancer. If you guys are playing blue gun lancer, uh, these are the thought process that you're supposed to have from until the very beginning to the very end. So you know how I went to the thought process of these four engravings and then one and then you have the utility engraving uh, that requires that covers your crit. So basically, if you have something like, oh, man, I'm, I'm I, you know, I don't have enough crit or enough uh, speed, you will take one of these engravings out. Right. And then add in adrenaline level three or spirit lotions level two, etc. If you go like four threes and a one or but if you have like a five three, a solid five three. This would be the highest damage potential and then you have seen the other options as well now let's go over to red